Good morning, boys and girls. It's me, Miss Jasmine, and welcome to Camp Courage. This month, we spent a lot of time talking about how God sent his only son, Jesus, here to earth. We learned about how Jesus came into the town of Jerusalem riding on a donkey, and people gathered from all over, spreading their coats on the ground and palm branches and waving them and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And then we talked about how those very same people changed their mind and betrayed Jesus and decided that he should be crucified and die on the cross. We also learned that God had a big plan, that neither him or Jesus were surprised by this. They knew that Jesus was to die on the cross. In fact, that was the plan all along. God had chosen his son Jesus to come and die on the cross for our sins. But not only that, something special happened on Easter Sunday. A, good, a great miracle happened. God rose his son Jesus from the dead, and he was no longer in that tomb. If you remember, Mary and Mary came to the tomb, and an angel was there and told them, Don't be afraid. Who you are looking for, he is not here. He is alive. And as they ran to go tell their friends, Jesus appeared to them on the road. And they were so excited that Jesus was there. And then he told them, Go, go tell the others that I am here. Well, they did that. And the others didn't quite believe them until Jesus appeared to them as well into the great room where they were all staying while they were hiding from those that had crucified Jesus. They were overjoyed when they saw that their friend Jesus, their Savior, was no longer dead but was there living among them. Well, you see, when God rose Jesus from the dead, he had other work for him to do. Jesus was not able to stay with the disciples for very long, and he wasn't able to see them for very long, too. So the disciples were missing Jesus. Just like many of you at home and myself, most of you are probably missing your friends and family, and you haven't been able to see them in a while. Well, Jesus knew this about the disciples, and he knows this about you too. And Jesus decided he wanted to surprise his disciples at least one more time before he had to go back to heaven with God. So before Sycamore Sam tells us that story, that leads me to our memory verse. Our memory verse for this month is, Jesus appeared to his disciples, John 21, 14. Can you imagine that? Jesus appeared to them on the road, and then he appeared to them in the upper room. Where do you think Jesus is going to appear to them this time? Well, Sycamore Sam is about to tell us that. But before he does, let's say our memory verse one more time. Are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus appeared to his disciples, John 21, 14. Take it away, Sam. Hey there, kids. It's me, your good buddy, Sycamore Sam. Hey, kids. Can you guess where I'm going today? Hmm. Got me a fishing pole. I got me a tackle box right here full of all kinds of stuff. And I even got me a fishing net. Hmm. Where do you think I'm going? Ha, that's right. I'm going fishing. I love to go fishing. Oh, man. And you know what, kids? Some of Jesus' friends, they love to go fishing, too. In fact, some of his friends decided to go fishing when they were waiting for Jesus to come. In fact, there were seven of his friends. There was Peter, there was John, and there were five more of Jesus' friends. Can you count to seven with me? Here we go. You ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of Jesus' friends decided to go fishing. They were waiting for Jesus to come. Do you kids remember when Mary and Mary came to Jesus' tomb to see him? But they found the tomb was empty. And then they found Jesus on the road. He met him there. And he said, hey, go tell your friends that I'm coming. Well, Peter and John and the other guys, they were all waiting for Jesus to come. But they had to wait and wait and wait. Have you ever had to wait for something? Well, they decided it's time to go fishing. So Peter and John and his five friends, they decided to go fishing. So they paddled out into the middle of the lake. They paddled and they paddled and then they took their nets and they cast them out there. You know what kids? They didn't have fishing poles like, like we have today. And they didn't have nets like this either. 
they had really big nets that they would throw out into the water. And then the fish would get caught in the net. Well, Peter, John, and the five other guys were fishing all night long. And they didn't catch one fish. And then something miraculous happened. They saw a man walking on the beach. And he called out to them, Hey, have you caught any fish? And Jesus' friends called back, No, we haven't caught anything. And then the man said this. He said, Throw your nets on the other side of the boat. Peter, John, and the other guys, they said, Well, we got nothing to lose. We haven't caught anything. So they pulled in their nets from one side of the boat. And they cast them out on the other side. And guess what happened? Surprise! Their nets started to get filled up with fish. In fact, there were so many fish that they couldn't even bring it in. Jesus' friends were surprised by what had happened. John squinted his eyes and he looked at the man on the shore. He was looking really hard. Guess what? Guess what he said, kids? He said, that's Jesus. And you know what Peter did? Peter got so excited, he jumped out of the boat and into the water. Splash! And started swimming to the shore. He wanted to see Jesus. John and the other disciples, they followed Peter. As he swam to the shore, they followed him in the boat, dragging their net full of fish with them. Jesus' friends caught 153 fish. Now, do you kids think they were little itty-bitty fish like this? Or do you think they were big fish like this? That's right. They were big fish. Can you imagine that? They caught 153 large fish because Jesus told them to throw their nets on the other side of the boat. Jesus said, come and eat. And to the his friends surprised. Jesus already had breakfast fixed. It was all prepared for them. Jesus' friends ate the fish and the bread that Jesus made for them. They were happy to see Jesus. And Jesus surprised them. You know what, kids? Jesus was a good friend to his friends. He helped them fish. He made them breakfast. Jesus was a good friend to them. And you know what, kids? He's a good friend to you, too. In fact, Jesus is the very best friend you can ever have. Kids, we're going to pray right now. Can you fold your hands like this? And let's pray. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being the very best friend ever. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Hey, kids, I'm Sycamore Sam, and I'll see you next week. Bye now. Jesus really is the best friend of all. Now let's hear a story about a girl named JC who was having a little bit of problems with some of her friends. Grandma, Grandma, JC called as she ran across a playground, her eyes full of tears. Grandma scooped her up and gave her a big hug. What's the matter, Grandma asked. Erin has a new friend. She doesn't want to be my friend anymore. Grandma dried JC's tears with a tissue and kissed her cheek. Honey, I'm sure Erin still wants to be your friend. Her cousin is visiting from out of town. Erin doesn't get to play with her cousin very often, and she's kind of excited. But Erin doesn't want me to play either, JC snipped. I don't have any friends. I want to go home. Grandma put an arm around JC's shoulder. I'm your friend, she said softly, and they walked to the park. As they got to the park, Grandma pulled a box of crackers out of her tote bag and began to show JC how to break the pieces up and throw them to the ducks. JC watched as the ducks scrambled to get the bits of food. Each time JC threw a piece of cracker, a few ducks would bite and squawk at the others. Grandma, they're being mean to each other, JC said. You're right, Grandma replied. They aren't behaving like good friends should. Sometimes people aren't very good friends either, JC said sadly. Grandma knelt in the grass beside JC. 
I know just how you feel about Aaron, she said. Sometimes friends make mistakes and forget to think about our feelings, but Jesus wants us to forgive them. JC threw a large piece of cracker. A big white duck snapped it up with his orange beak. I learned in children's church that Jesus is my best friend. That's right, said grandma. He is our best friend and he'll never disappoint us and he'll always be there when we need help. I'm glad Jesus is my best friend, said JC, and I'm so glad he gave us each other. Me too, said grandma. And then a duck started quacking. JC giggled. I think he's glad too. Let's see who is listening to the story. Why was JC crying? Did she fall down and get hurt? Was she afraid? Or was she sad that her friend didn't want to play with her? If you know the answer, shout it out. If you said she was sad because her friend didn't want to play with her, you're right. So who did JC learn was her best friend? Any answers? If you said Jesus, that's right. And who is your best friend? That's right, Jesus. Just like Jesus was a good friend to the disciples by cooking them breakfast and helping them catch fish in their nets. And just like he was a great friend to JC, reminding her that he'll never disappoint her or leave her. He can be your best friend too. So this week, if you're having any trouble with friends or if you're feeling alone or missing some of them, remember that Jesus is your best friend and he'll always be with you. Have a great week, guys. Thank you.